morning guys and welcome to another video. As you can see, I'm not filming with the MX-5 today. Ah, oh, sad face. But I am filming with my daily driver, the Mark VI Golf GT. So the main reason why I love this car as a daily driver is the powertrain. So mine is fitted with the two litre TDI Blue Motion technology and it's mated to a six speed manual gearbox in this car. But they did fit these with anything from a 1.2 petrol inline four TSI to a 2.5 inline five petrol. Um, but I'm pretty sure they only sold those in America. So as I mentioned, the transmission on this is a six speed, but they also did a five speed and a six speed auto as well as a uh, DSG gearbox. And the difference between the Blue Motion technology and the standard 2 litre TDI is the 2 litre TDI had 110 PS and 250 newton meters, whereas the uh, Blue Motion technology had 140 PS and 320 newton meters. Uh, it feels super weird being sat on the passenger side of my own car. How often do you sit on the passenger side of your own car? Anyway, what I love about this interior are mainly the seats. These seats are so good. They're full leather and they're heated as well. Front seats only in this car and they're just so comfy and there's so much adjustment. And on the driver's side, you have lumbar adjustment as well. But I was really surprised when I first drove this car because they are so comfortable that you can do really long journeys without even really realizing it. The longest journey I've done in this car was from Paris to London and that was about six and a half hours. And the main thing that hurt was my eyes because it was dark, not my back. They've got some nice bolstering on them as well, but it doesn't encroach too much into your back. Really happy with these seats, and I imagine that Volkswagen spent a lot of money developing them. So the interior in here is very German. It's very unoffensive, very neutral. I don't think you could really dislike it. There's not really anything to dislike. It's so simple. This model did come with a sat-nav, but my one doesn't have the sat-nav fitted, and I'll get onto that in a minute. What I find with a lot of Japanese cars, if you look at the um, Civic or maybe some of the older Japanese cars, all of of the interior is focused towards the driver and that is really cool but obviously it does exclude the passenger a lot Volkswagen definitely haven't excluded the passenger because it is just a flat plane because you know we like to involve everyone in the car experience not just the driver another thing that I love is this center console you wouldn't think it but the center console makes a huge difference to my life on a long drive it does the normal center console stuff it's padded leather which makes it really comfy and squishy it's not heated I know some of the new Mercedes have heated leather armrests yes mercedes so this center armrest also pulls out and it doesn't look like a lot it's about i don't know that much but that much extension means that you can have a perfect left arm on the door rest right arm on the armrest and then sort of just sit here and oh just so comfortable it's starting to rain quite badly on my camera now and maybe change camera positions so you can see the center console better from this view. Now what I was saying about the screen, so Volkswagen did offer this car, the Mark VI GT, with a sat-nav. And some of them you could even get a reversing camera which popped out of the Volkswagen logo at the back. Now back in the day when this car was built, we didn't have the uh, full nice touch screens that we have like nowadays. So the sat-nav model still comes with uh, these two buttons either side. Um, if anyone's got one and I'm wrong, please correct me. And the resolution isn't great on them and you can definitely tell that it's uh, 2009 technology. Now that brings me on to the reason why I like this setup so much and it may be an unpopular opinion but I actually prefer the old setup that I've got here because I don't think this black surround with the digital screen looks too dated so because there's no screen screens are a really good indication of how old a car is if it's got like a new fancy shiny glossy touchscreen it's probably quite a new car it doesn't actually look that old because it could just be a base spec whereas the top of the line cars from back in the day had LCD screens in them but they were really low resolution and quite pixelated I guess what I'm trying to say is that screen technology moves on so quickly now. Even a, a screen, a colour screen especially from two years ago, actually looks quite old compared to the new colour screens. And that's the same with cars because it was the same screen technology. And I believe that's why if you look at some of the BMW 3 Series interiors, they don't look that dated as well because there aren't any screens in them and they still look quite modern today. I believe that minimalism in interior car design ages much better than if you were to have you know, the highest and latest tech. Just look at the MX-5, for example. That interior still doesn't feel that old because there's not that much technology to give away what year it is. So I hope that makes sense. Screen ran over. So as you can 
see this car has halogen bulbs on the interior and I can change these. It's about 80 pounds to change them to LEDs. I do think these date the car quite a lot because not many cars now are fitted with halogen bulbs. But this car does have two LEDs and you might see these two little lights here and these two little red LEDs at night shine this sort of red light on. You can see it on my hand there and it lights up the whole interior. And when you're driving along and change gear, your hand glows up red and call me a child, but I think that's really cool. This is sort of like this car's version of ambient lighting. So in BMWs, Mercedes, Audis now, you get light strips across the doors and around the glove box and stuff. This is the Mark VI Golf version of ambient lighting. And I quite like it. Now, one of the small luxuries in this car, apart from the uh, electronic adjustability of the wing mirrors, yeah. The party piece is this setting just here. And when I flick this round, you get heated wing mirrors. Now, I didn't think I'd need heated wing mirrors until I come out in the morning and the car is completely covered in ice and you just flick that on up there and it is amazing because wing mirrors don't get heat normally and when you drive along, they just sit out getting all cold and blown on. Now, the only problem with this system is that I forget that I've turned it on and then I just end up driving around for days with the heated wing mirrors on. And it is really difficult to tell because it's a tiny little symbol and it hardly lights up at all. So um, yeah, I, I end up wasting loads of energy by driving around with the heated wing mirrors on when they don't need to be. Um, and that annoys me a little bit. They should have like an auto off function that after like 20 minutes, this just springs around and they've probably fixed it on one of their new cars. It probably doesn't even have a dial anymore. Now, another feature that I really like on this car is the chrome trim. It's the little things but you can see it here on the air vents, but it's also around these buttons here, as well as around the heater controls and the rear window heat, aircon, and recirc buttons. And you can see that that chrome trim actually extends all the way around the car. It's sort of like faux aluminium. It's not real aluminium, it's plastic. Is it real aluminium? Nah, it's plastic. The door handles are real aluminium though. You can see on that window control there, there is a little strip of aluminium which also matches the uh, air vents around. Volkswagen also matched it up really well with the steering wheel controls. So the GT comes with steering wheel controls either side. You can see on this side, we've got the uh, up and down functions for the little multifunction display and you can change the modes on this side. And on the left hand side, we've got the radio and phone controls and also the voice activation. And I've never ever used the voice activation in this car. Probably because I don't really like the systems because they never seem to work. But with the design of this car, they matched up the uh, silver surrounds and you can see it there on the dials as well. Even the little sub dials, so you can see on the water temperature, the dials have got the little chrome surround and then the base for the hands of the dials have got the chrome surrounds as well. So I think it's those little touches that just uh, make this car feel a little bit more special. And you can see the multifunction display there showing that the doors are open. Also, I would like to note on this system that you can't actually change the menu function with the doors open because it won't let you go anywhere. So I need to close the doors. The engine isn't on at the moment. That's why all the lights are on, the uh, battery light and the engine light, as well as my seatbelt light. So the main thing I wanted to show you here is the little multifunction display. I think that's what it's called. And this now feels very dated compared to the newer cars. But again, we're talking a few years ago, almost 10 years ago that this system was designed, but it does everything that you need it to do. On the multifunction, we've got the fuel consumption in real time, the temperature at the bottom of the screen, a little Bluetooth symbol showing me that my phone's connected. We've got the average consumption for the journey, calculated fuel range, which does go up and down with the average fuel consumption for that journey. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I do like monitoring the oil temperature of this car. Ugh. Now I like doing that because I put mobile one uh, semi thin 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 th uh, mobile one semi synthetic in this car before, and it actually ran at about 110 degrees C oil temperature. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but with the Castrol that I've got in it at the moment, it runs at about 95 unless you're going uphill for a long period of time at a high speed. But the mobile semi thin I can't say that word. The mobile semi synthetic ran about 10 degrees hotter everywhere than the current Castrol fully synthetic. And I find that really interesting. And my Mazda doesn't have either an oil temperature readout or a water temperature readout. So I can't do those kind of cool experiments with that, which is really frustrating. And I am going to look at fitting both an oil and a water temperature into the Mazda because yeah, I feel like I need to know those things as a driver. It's one of those things that I'm clinging on to as cars get more and more sophisticated and they don't want you to know what's going on under the bonnet. I'm weird like that. Now, another thing are these little hand rails, hand grip, hand rail, grippy, hand grippy rail things. Um, a lot of cars aren't even fitted with these anymore. I don't really know why, but on here, they're soft clothes. Just the little things, you know? Oh dear. 
Now one of the great things about this GT model, and I apologise for the dirtiness of this glove box, but the uh, glove box is actually lined with felt, as you can see, which stops things rattling around in it, which I think is a really great design feature, as well as the fact that it is a soft closed glove box. Now that felt is even extended into the door card, so you see this uh, door pocket here, that's also lined with felt, which again stops things from rolling and rattling around in there. Volkswagen just thought of everything. You can tell that I've been to France in this car because I've got all the things that I need to uh, drive in France. In here, I've got the high vis jacket, the Alco Sense, it e it's even a French breathalyzer. Look, extra strength, as well as uh, spare headlight bulbs, which I have actually used. Look, now coming on to the headlights, there's a really cool little feature which I'll show you now. You see, just there on the front of the headlight is a little Volkswagen logo. Now, it probably took me six months to notice that whilst I was cleaning the car, and I think it is quite a common thing on Volkswagens, and most of them have it. But yeah, on the bulb shield that disperses the light for the main beam headlamp, there is a little Volkswagen logo that just makes me really really happy. And this car actually has the classic Volkswagen design feature of having two inside lights either side of the radiator grille on all the time. Now that I believe is actually standard for any car built after 2012. You actually have to have the headlights on all the time, there's no option to turn them off. And the chrome trim that I was talking about earlier extends here as well look. And this is how you tell a GT because the lower grille surround actually has a chrome strip around it as well as the front fog lights having chrome strips around them. So a great long distance feature of this car which I wish the Mazda had is a floor hinge mounted accelerator pedal. You can see it just here. And what I mean by that is that the pedals don't come from above and hinge that way. It starts on the bottom and hinges that way. It makes a huge amount of difference on long journeys. This is a brake pedal obviously, and it's mounted from the top. So you have to raise your foot to push on it. But because the accelerator pedal is floor mounted, you just rest your foot here and sort of press on it like that. And that really helps for car fatigue on long distance journeys. So I did clean the car, but it's actually got dirty quite quickly. Um, no idea why. So how do you tell a GT from any other Mark 6 Golf? Well, other than the nice big badge that I've got on this one, so as you can see it says 2 litre TDI Blue Motion, but the GT has cherry red lights as opposed to a standard Mark 6 which just has red lights. Now in my opinion the lights are the main thing that date this car, so these are halogens as well and um, yeah you don't really get halogens on cars these days, they're pretty much all LEDs. Now the GTDs, the later Mark 6s, did have little uh, LED flicks, I'll put a picture of it now. Now I think that they look much cooler, uh, but yeah, mine doesn't have those because it's uh, not a GTD. The main giveaway for a big engine Mark VI is the exhaust pipes. So the 2 litre TDI as well as the 1.4 TSI had twin tailpipes and you can spot a 1.6 diesel or a 1.2 TSI because it only has one tailpipe and that's the biggest giveaway if you're behind a Mark VI and can't tell which one it is. The GTDs also had two tailpipes in the bottom left hand corner but the GTIs had one either side because they're special. Also on the GT you've got the rear privacy glass so you can see the rear window as well as the rear passenger windows are slightly tinted compared to the fronts and they're factory tints as well so they're not the uh, aftermarket ones that always fall over. Now my car is fitted with 16 inch alloy wheels, I'm not sure of the name of them, but they did do a GT with 17 inch alloy wheels and I really like the look of the 17s. But a plus side of having the 16s is you get better ride quality because there's a bigger tyre. This car takes a 205.55 and um, because of that 55 you get an extra 10 mil of uh, squishiness in the rubber. And it also means you get slightly cheaper tyres, so um, yeah, not too displeased about having the 16s. One of the best things in my opinion of the Mark VI is the boot space and you can see I've got a lot of stuff in mine at the moment but um, that just proves how much it can take. Also on the GT you get a 12 volt socket in the boot, no idea why you'd need that in case you were like transporting a fugitive or something and they needed to charge up their phone. And the thing that has saved me twice in this car is the space saver spare wheel. Once on a French motorway and once on the M6 on a very cold January morning. Now it's a real shame to see uh, car manufacturers not putting in uh, space saver wheels anymore but this spare wheel has genuinely saved me twice so far and I'm sure it will save me again in the future. One of the best things about this car it's actually got a proper spare wheel and not that goo spray stuff that never really works and ruins your tyre. So whether you're looking at buying one of these cars or not, hope you found this video interesting and uh, can sort of see why I love this car so much. I love my Mazda as well, don't get me wrong, but this car takes me to and from work every day and the events that are really far away that I won't drive the Mazda to, I go in this. Basically, it's just a brilliant all-round car. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. There's loads more content coming soon. Cheers. So I've just done this slow motion engine shot and um... Yeah, I know the latch is sticky, but yeah, now I can't close the bonnet, as you see. It won't close. Normally, I drive around with a full toolbox in this car, but um, yeah, 
the one day that I don't have them is the day that I can't get the bonnet closed. Woohoo! Now I just need a screwdriver to poke the latch. I fixed it with a twig, look. Just pushed the latch open with a twig. Boom. Maybe not. It's gonna be an interesting drive back.